Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To all old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Thank you for being here. This is a prophetic blog that is sharing forth the dreams, the visions, the words, the admonitions, the warnings, the correction, the rebuke, and at times, very rarely, the, the occasional encouragement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I have a short, and I will attempt to make it short, word, message, revelation from the Lord that is not any part of a printed prophecy. It does relate to an existing prophecy, but this word was given to me less than an hour ago by the Lord, and I would ask that. It doesn't matter where you are in the world when you see this video. It doesn't actually matter what country you live in, what continent you live in. Yes, at times, the word may specifically relate to the United States, but because of greater themes that God was speaking about here, this word actually concerns the Church of Jesus Christ. So, Church of Jesus Christ, this that I'm about to say to you is for your own edification. It is for your own warning, and it is for your own good. The Lord actually brought this prophetic message to my mind, and it's linked to an existing prophecy that I wrote, I think it must be more than a year ago. It's called In the Midst of Deceit. And so I will simply title this video, In the Midst of Deceit, part two, as I share with us what the Lord wants his people to know. If you are a part of the church of Jesus Christ, then there are some things that by now, if you have not grasped them, you do not have a lot of time. And I'm not speaking um, urgency here or doomsday or something is happening tomorrow. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that it is high time that the Lord's church came into full maturity. It is high time that the Lord's people came to the deeper understanding of some things that will actually be essential to refine them and to save their life. I've spoken in many of my videos about the expectations that people have in the church and how, for instance, how rapture minded this last day's church is, which just goes, I believe, to the fact that the majority of the last day's church has been very poorly taught about what the last days even are. They don't really have a studied understanding of what God's intentions are concerning these final times. And so you find that even between the Lord Jesus Christ and his own church, there is a huge disparity. There is a huge gap between what people think God is going to do in these last days and what God is actually going to do in these last days. So this points to the existence of what we call deceit. Deceit is when there is a false belief in somebody. When somebody is holding a false belief, a false understanding, or a poorly built understanding of a situation or a subject, that person is deceived. So if someone, for instance, thinks that water is dry, if such a thing was possible, then we say that person is deceived. But then that means that in order for someone to be deceived, there also has to be a person or a group of person or organizations, or perhaps even a larger international functionary that is devoted to deceiving. So in order for someone to de be deceived, they must have wrong information about something that is material, something that is important. But then if we have deceived people, that means that we also have to be mature enough to understand that there are deceivers. And it was about these deceivers that the Lord was speaking to me. It is very rare that I even mention or will give an inner glimpse into how this channel is run, how I do this work for the Lord um, I do not feel that those things are necessary. Those things are the internal processes of how God is working with me as his servant. But he said today that I may speak about them. And so very briefly, I will bring out for this listening audience to have an understanding of what happens here at the master's voice and how that relates largely to our lives as believers. This work is a prophetic work that the Heavenly Father raised up sovereignly. That means that God, without asking anyone's opinion, came to Celestial 
and said that you are my servant that I have formed from your mother's womb and called to do this and this and this for me. And this and this and this shall you do until I gave you or give you word to cease. And so whenever you come to this channel, you are in you are watching the work of the Lord unfolding. This is the teaching of the Lord, the revelations of the Lord, the scriptures of the Lord, and the prophetic words that he gives me all the time. I have collated these words since 2012, which is when the Lord first started talking to me about end times events. And so when I'm here reading, I'm sometimes reading things from three years ago, five years ago, things that were spoken in privacy between me and the Lord, or should I say revealed in privacy from the Lord to me without anyone else's input. Now that these things are being put out here, I'm simply putting out, putting them out here so that God's people may be warned, so that God's people can have a greater understanding of what the Lord is requiring from them. But then whenever you find the Lord's work taking place, just as Nehemiah was building the wall in the Bible, you will always find those that I simply called stirrers. In other words, those who want to stir the pot. And what I notice here is that there is a plethora of stirrers. And I remarked to the Lord and I said, Lord, why does this happen? It is almost as if like flies, they are being attracted here. And the Lord said, it is because of the making of the perfumer's ointment. So I think this is in the book of Proverbs where it talks about the perfumer's ointment and how you have to protect it from flies. So the ladies will understand that we have two different types of scents that we use. One's, one is eau de toilette and one is eau de parfum. So eau de toilette is it does not contain as much of the precious perfumed oils that make a scent very heady and very strong and long lasting. That's why eau de the, vap, the, the vaporizers, right? Eau de toilette is a very light version of a perfume. If you spray it, it smells nice, but it's gone within one or two hours. However, eau de parfum is very expensive because it contains higher quantities of these very expensive oils. And because the expensive oils are a lot in there, Eau de parfum costs a lot. And so the Lord was teaching me and telling me, Celestial, you are bringing forth the perfumer's ointment. But then whenever ointment is being made, little spoilers will come and try to spoil the ointment. And those spoilers are flies. So what I'm saying to Christians, whether it is this channel you come to or anywhere else that you feel that you are receiving the word of the Lord without reproach, meaning that it is the true word. It is pointing you to the living Christ and it is preaching you the whole counsel of God, the gospel of God without apology. Be careful, for there are in the midst, even in the church, the ravenous wolves that climb in. And the Lord was talking to me today because it was very much on my heart because of an incident that again happened. Someone came to the blog, let me be coherent, because of an incident that happened. And what the Lord was saying to me was, because the perfumer's ointment is coming forth, it attracts the flies to try and spoil it. And so this is why after I've spent a few days, after I put up a new video and I leave it for a while and I spend a few days and I come back, we'll constantly find people saying that this, the things that are being said here are not true or um, America is not Mystery Babylon. The day that you will finally come to the agreement that Mystery Babylon is unfortunately the day that Australia, England, Wales, even Iraq, they will watch as this country is set ablaze by Russia and China from both ends. The Bible says in Revelation 18 that the merchants and the kings of the earth were stupefied. They were astounded. They could not believe that God would actually do this as they watched mystery Babylon go up in a column of smoke so black that it was rising. The smoke of her burning, it was called. And so there's no need for back and forth and remonstrations because there, there are more than 15 prophecies on the master's voice where the Lord has emphatically said that 
This nation is the nation that he concealed in scripture as mystery Babylon. And he even said that there's no more mystery anymore, that the mystery has been opened. But not only is that what I am proclaiming here, it was proclaimed decades ahead of my time by other prophets that the Lord raised up. And they also met the same flies and the same resistance to the truth. I am saying to Christians, both in the United States and internationally, that God is no stranger to the hard-heartedness of the nation that is called the United States of America. But God has said that America will find out who is the hardest of all. And so when these truths are going forth, I'm saying to those who are called of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, that you have to understand that the church is operating in the midst of a very dangerous and deceiving time. Deceiving how so? There are people in the church whose language will sound right, and they will quote a lot of scriptures for you, but they have no understanding in themselves. And they actually are following what the apostle Paul called another Jesus and another gospel. Some of these people are the people who are clinging very, very closely to the fact that they think that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to whisk his bride away any moment. And yet these people are deceived for these people live in the midst of a nation that is so filthy that if I celestial put on the master's voice the truth of the fact that same-sex relationships, same-sex marriage, crossing of gender and crossing of traditional gender roles has toppled America into living insanity to the point that people are now being targeted and chased and, and even fired from their jobs for acknowledging the basic truths of biology. A huge debate will erupt. So now I said that I would be coherent. Recently on the Master's Voice, on the blog, a subscriber put up an article that I never would have come across because I simply don't have time to keep up with the news or to even keep up with the fulfillment of these messages. Subscriber put up um, the stern, I would just call them the stern mutterings of the man we know as President Vladimir Putin. And Putin was saying that he will protect Russia with all his strength and with all his might against the influx of the filth and the lack of common sense, this is what he called it, that America and the West, so we're talking about European nations and many other nations that follow European guidelines, um, such as the Australian Commonwealth, for instance, and places like that, countries that are modeled after the EU and modeled after the United States, Putin said that he would fight with all his might to stop and block the, the inflow of the lack of US morality. And when I saw this article, I thought this is very kind of this person because this man's words match exactly what the Lord told me by the power of his spirit, which is that in the final times when Russia comes comes here to occupy the United States, people who will be greatly punished are people who indulge in sexual immorality of all kinds. So this is not only people who practice same-sex lifestyle, same-sex attractions, cross-dressing and crossing and blending their gender. You're a man on Tuesday, but then if you suddenly feel like you want to wear heels and paint your hands and, 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 and put your breast implants in, then you're going to do that. It's not only these people who will be punished severely. I saw by the spirit of the Lord in visions that when the Russians came here, they were motivated almost not by themselves. God himself said that he would rouse up this country. He would rile them up. He would rile up China and they would, they would grab a whole lot of many, many allies. So the allies that I've listed so far in these prophecies, it was Russia and China. And then there were Ukraine, a primary, a primary ally of Russia. And there was Taiwan who will be a primary ally of China. But as the Lord began to progressively unveil this prophecy to me over the years, the Lord has revealed that not only will Japan be involved. So when people hear this, they're shocked because right now Ukraine and Russia are at loggerheads, but Ukraine will be become Russia's best friend. They will strike hands. To strike hands mean to come to a pact or a covenant, an agreement. And these people will be part of the invading forces that come here to destroy this country in the end. China will also be backed up by Taiwan, but the other Asian dragons will come. The last prophecy that I put up on the master's voice less than a week ago reveals that in the future, Korea that has been divided for almost 70 years 
They will fly down the slopes of the mountain, the Lord revealed. Brother will embrace brother, and red and black will become one unit. And then he said, they will turn as one man and destroy America. So those kings of the East are actually going to march across Europe. And many European countries, if you're listening or watching this video, it would bless you to pay attention because much of the fate of the United States will befall Europe. But the Lord revealed that because the Europeans are extremely sage people, which simply means extremely wise people, God showed me that many European leaders are actually going to negotiate with Putin and they will not be destroyed. They will not come under the kind of destruction for reprobate living that America will fall under. And so many of these countries will fall to Russia. They will fall under Russian occupation, but they will not be destroyed and wiped from the map like America will. And so this person put up this article that matched so much of what God said that when Russia came here and when China came here in the future, as I saw, they had a zero tolerance, tolerance, um, policy for cross-dressing and cross-mating kind with kind and crossing the line. So I put that up and then I come back after 24 or 48 hours to find that people are arguing and saying that, well, it's subjective anyway, if you practice this kind of lifestyle. And one woman actually had the audacity and the temerity to say, why is God so obsessed about what people do in private? I want I want it to be understood here that I am a Christian through and through. I believe that there is one God, that there is one sacrifice for sin, even the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I am not a child here who is starting in elementary matters of understanding the scriptures or understanding the personage of God. And the Lord gave me a scripture as he was talking to me because this whole video that I'm giving you is feeding directly out of the conversation of the Lord to myself. An hour ago, he gave me the scripture and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and 44. And it simply says, even before I unlock my tablet, it simply says that he who calls Jesus Christ, he who curses the Lord, let him be anathema. So he who will reprove the Lord, he who will try to in his his limited human, you're going to turn into dust one day and be put in a box. And this, this is if you're lucky to actually pass away in peace at the end of a long life. And I'm speaking only to the recalcitrant and the hard hearted. And yet there's something in you, this root of pride that grows up from a root into a sapling until it becomes a tree branching in your being. You don't have the fear of the Lord and you speak things that are nothing but ignorance and arrogance out of the emptiness of your belly that was never fed the truth. You dare to use your tongue to speak against the Lord. And then you think that your end will be in peace. Apostle Paul says, let such people be anathema. The word anathema simply means accursed. So then some will hear it and say, this is the thing. God is so angry and so bloody. Another person came to the blog and was saying, why should we be forced to, to worship an entity who is so violent and who is so angry? And I think this is typical human behavior. You see, human behaviors will look at the response of God and then act just like children when you catch them doing wrong. See, when you catch small children in the act of doing wrong, they have this shock as if they can't understand why you are upset. They have this shock as if they don't know why mom and dad is angry. Human beings in spiritual matters have the t tendency to edit out the key part of the judgment genome. So if this was the spiral of DNA that eventually leads to judgment, starting here and ending here, they clip it in the middle and take out the important bit where they commit sodomy, abortion, lying, murder, covetousness, jealousy, envy, destroying the reputation of others. They edit out all their personal sin and then simply say, I was standing here and then all of a sudden God was mad and saying that he will burn America. And I just don't know how such an entity would do that. These are children having no understanding and no foundation in themselves. And this is the reason that I rarely engage because I'm, God didn't send me to teach Bible 101. Yes, I'm quite able to do it, 
but he always reminds me, stick to the fundamentals of what I gave you. Proclaim my word and leave it. And this is why this video is to the sheep of Jesus Christ, to the true blood-washed Christians, even to those who are desperately seeking to know what the truth in this world is. Is there a God? Is there not a God? If there is a God, what does he want from me? What does he require from me? And how do I do it? If you are one of those people, then this video will build you up and this video will give you hope to know that there is a God, that there is a Jesus, that there is a Holy Spirit, that they do exist, that their power is limitless and that none can challenge it. So when you come to a place like this, I strongly urge you not to be distracted by the many flies that always come when a banquet is laid. God is laying a banquet for his people. And even though many of us are struggling with the food that's on the table, it is necessary for us to consume this food because if we do not eat it now, it will be force fed to us later by the calamities and the wars and the rumors of wars and the rise of the beast and the painful punishments that are going to fall upon all the nations, but especially this one. The Lord has never said to me that another nation will be blotted off the map, but to me, he has said, and I have proclaimed it in multiple videos, that America will be a tree that is chopped down. And then even the stump that is in the ground will not be shown the mercy of Daniel chapter three, which is where Nebuchadnezzar was a tree and he was an arrogant man. And he also, like many of the flies out there, had a mouth that constantly spoke against God. And one day the Lord got tired and the watchers of heaven cried out, chopped down the tree and banded about with a band of iron and let seven times pass over it. Let him eat beet. Let him eat the grass of the field like a beast. Let his mind depart from him. All these punishments will come upon this nation. Madness will come upon this country, the Lord has said, because the hedges of the nation are broken. The people of this country are unapologetic about sin to a major degree. And this is why God's people must understand that they dwell in the midst of deceit. You cannot be a parent out there who has a daughter who has married someone else's daughter. And then you think that the best way to show love is to be supportive of this error. You yourself as a parent are in error. It proves that you are not a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how much you claim or denominate yourself a Christian, you are not because the Lord says that my true sheep hear my voice and they know me. You cannot read the laws of God and hear the words of the Lord through the scripture, his clear voice, and then decide, I've seen it, but for the sake of Kathy and Jennifer, I'm going to pretend I didn't see it because I want to be supportive in this life. When you pass away, Kathy and Jennifer are certainly going to face their own judgment in fire for the choice that they made, which is to cast the Lord Jesus Christ behind their back and indulge their fleshly lusts for now. But you as the mother, the father, or even the sibling of this, what will you say before the Lord? And he reads out the book, the, the words of Romans to you that they equally are guilty. Them who practice the sin, I think this is Romans chapter one, verse 32, or Romans chapter two and verse one or two. It's in that short stint where the Lord says that those who practice abominations before me are guilty of judgment and punishment, but so too are those who support them that do the sin. So you're out there every June with your pride flag, because this relates back to what this person shared with my blog about how Putin is saying even now before Russia comes here, that he is going to fight the flood of madness, gender bending, homosexuality, and such things. He is going to fight it with all his might. If this man says that he will fight it when he's all the way up there in the Siberian peninsula, in his country, what do we imagine will be the outflow when he comes here with innumerable troops, boots on the ground? Whether you're in any country or in this country, let us use our minds together. If someone says that they can't stand something and they're at their house, 
What do you think will happen when God empowers them and weaponizes them and brings them to your house? Do you think that they're going to change their belief systems because they're at your house? Or are they going to enter your house and turn your house into a replica of their house? It is for this reason that the Lord says that of the punishment of, of America, it will be so rooted that this country was what he called a Russian colony. And I explained in that video that a colony is not a place that you go to and hang up a few curtains and a few pictures to make it remind you of home. A colony is actually a country where the people lose their way of life. They lose their right to speak their language. They lose, lose the right to worship as they want. Not that America will be losing much in that area. They lose the right to live as they know, and they are forced to adopt the culture, the belief systems, um, the social systems, and every other type of institution of their colonizers. That's why Australia and India and everywhere else that the British crown went speaks English and does whatever they did. Those ways were hammered into the population and their own ways were hammered out of them as much as the British could manage. And this is exactly what will happen in the United States by way of punishment. So when you live in the middle of deceit, you have to be careful. And the reason is this, when you live among people who are largely deceived, and you do not practice the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of man, but the spiritual wisdom of God to separate yourself out of the general behaving population, the, the general behaviors of the population. When it's time to judge that sinful population, you will be judged with them. This is the reason that the Bible gives a desperate cry and says, come out of her, my people. Everything, everyone thinks that, many people think that this means I have to emigrate, I have to run away to France or somewhere else. It literally means to take the sharpest scissors that you can and begin cutting the belief systems, the practices, the things you support, the things you think, well, it's not so bad. I, I'm not sure if it's a sin. Let's be objective here and just think about it for a moment. If you think that heaven practices objectivity or that heaven follows these different foolish nuances of the United States of America, won't it be a painful and shocking day on the day that the Lord Jesus Christ begins handing out crowns of righteousness to the people who kept the word of God as it is given and then begins to hand out whip lashes and one-way tickets to hellfire to the people who thought that by being wise and moderate and accommodating, they were proving themselves to be princes of wisdom. I say to you that you are fools. And if you do not separate yourself from the foolishness of this nation, it will take you straight down into a dark place that you will scream and find no relief from. For this is what the scripture says. These are not my words. The Bible says that in hell is darkness that causes people to chew through their tongue. The worm consumes, which means that your eternal body, for you will get one. All who are resurrected get an incorruptible form that cannot die. The only problem is that other people will be picking daffodils and daisies with the Lord Jesus Christ with their eternal body in his rest. And the rest will have their incorruptible body being constantly consumed by fire and what the scripture calls the worm that turns, which basically means creepies boring into your skin constantly. So deceit of sin is the pursuit of the human agenda and the hard heartedness that causes us to reject God's law and to exalt another law. So to those who are living in these jur jurisdictions that are telling you that the same kinds can marry, and it's a question of a human right, and it's a question of a law, understand that these are temporary constructs. That's right. These are temporary constructs that have been erected in the earth so that people can flock to them instead of flocking to the truth of Jesus. Jesus Christ. So whenever you see someone raising up a standard in the earth that tears down what God says, it is for one reason, that is to weaken the protection of the hand of God over this world. Wherever sin is increasing in the earth, I can guarantee you that in that country, reprobate activity, crime, and general wickedness is on the increase. And American statistics bear that out in every single area. And so wherever there is hard-heartedness in a nation, you are 
attracting judgment to yourself because God is just. He cannot allow sin to go on forever, which is why I was talking about those who have this very weird DNA spiral. They can see themselves here and then they suddenly see God here saying he will judge and they don't want to pay attention to the very long road of human sin that does not abate, but instead increases and spikes year after year, month after month, day after day, until the righteous who live in the midst of that filthy environment are literally perishing in their hearts, screaming and crying out to God in their prayers. Why do you not judge this? The reason that God doesn't judge it is simple, is because if God is going to judge it now, then even for telling a small lie to your husband, like you were tired when you weren't, you will also be judged. The Lord is long suffering and extremely patient, but on the day that he judges sin, he will judge sin holistically from the ones that we call small to the ones that we think are huge because we always think our sin is here and the sin of the elites or the rich or whoever is the particular boogeyman in our life. We think their sin is here. Sin is like this. It's on an even plane and God will judge it from end to end. So People who are following alternate belief systems, like I said, many standards are being raised up in the earth today. There are places where people are telling you to come and let's hum and, and say this and get on the same frequency and, and call our greater divine other or, or get into tap into this or tap into that. Be, un, be aware that actually voices of the truth are going to fall quiet as we go deeper into the end times. People who are telling you the truth, people who are teaching you the raw scripture and telling you we have to come back to the standard of righteousness at, at all costs, such people will be silenced because Satan is the father of the new world that is rising. And Satan is simply not going to tolerate voices like mine. So you are on, in a way, a very limited buffet schedule. This food is not going to be here forever. This perfumer's ointment that God has prepared for you, not for myself, or I could simply switch the camera off and keep all the knowledge that I have to myself. It warms me and it keeps me safe. It shows me how to walk, but because God has sent me, knowing that he has a people that he wishes to draw back to the standard of righteousness, many standards are in the earth. A man is a woman and a woman is a man and this and that and a child is just a clump of cells. It's not really real. If it's inconveniencing you in any way, you can just get rid of it and things like that. There's so many voices, but God said to me today that the loudest voice that will be heard in the earth is his. He said that there are many false beliefs telling people that sin is okay. Loud voices blasting through the loudspeakers of the earth, telling people that many things are okay, which are not okay. But the loud voice in America that tells people that their depravity is okay because there is a law for it. God said that there is coming a louder, coming a day when a much louder voice will cry out from heaven, chop down the tree and show it no mercy. And in that day when the bombs are falling on this country from every corner, only God's people can expect to see his covering hand of mercy over them. And he said that if anyone has any doubts in that day, how there will be a differentiation between the righteous and the unrighteous, we must understand that he, God, knows the heart of every person and that the unrighteous will never be able to hide themselves in that day, nor shall the righteous, their light, be covered, but it will blaze forth. And the Lord has revealed to me, and I shared in these prophecies, that Russia will have almost like a GPS in them. It doesn't matter who is captive. The Russians will have almost like an internal programming system that will be so callous and harsh to people who are practicing lifestyles of sinfulness now. So these young women out there that are just thinking that perhaps twerking is life and the less clothes, the more, and this is a nation that is trying to legalize, I don't know if they've legalized it, but they're trying to normalize this lifestyle of stripping, taking off your clothes on different types of online apps for money and saying that it's a profession too, and trying to grant it this kind of decency that it can never have by reason of what this is. Demoralizing of the human form in exchange for finances. And we are trying to say, but it's an occupation. And actually, if we made prostitution, and stripping a safer occupation, then women wouldn't be so demoralized by the very act. 
by the very act, a woman is demoralized. So this temporary false reality that America has created and spread all over the world has dripped into the hearts of almost all of the population. There are actually very few Christians that will stand for the word of God as it is, no matter what. And this is why God said to tell people here that you don't have to worry about how he will protect you and save you because he is the God who sees night and day the same. This doesn't mean that God sees unrighteous and righteous the same. It means that God cannot be fooled by darkness, nor can he be blinded by light. This is in Psalm 139. It says, night and day are alike to you. That means that God will spot the unrighteous under the fluffiest he will spot the wolves under the fluffiest snake skin, um, sheep skin. And at the same time, a true sheep will never be hidden from his eyes for he knows the way of the righteous. And so I just want to say that if you're a Christian, no matter where you are, it is time that you begin to train your spirit anew, train your spirit afresh, train your spirit in diligence. When you hear these conversations of people going, oh no, but this and that, and we have to be tolerant, separate yourself, separate yourself. Keep the ancient paths This is Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 10. I'm just going to paraphrase it. Who can I speak to? Who can I give my warning so that they may hear? Indeed, they have uncircumcised ears and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is as a rebuke to them. So it's a reproach, meaning it's a dirty and an unwanted thing, and they do not delight in it. And also this is Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. But this is what the Lord says. Stand in the roadways and see. Ask for the ancient paths and follow where the good road is. Walk on it and there you will find rest for your souls. This is what I said to them. But they replied, we will not walk in it. And I set watchmen over them, and I told them, listen to the sound of the watchman's trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. And so I just want it known that as I labor here in my Lord's field, it is with my whole heart that I am doing it because I know that my reward with the Father will be so great at the end of whatever my days are going to be like. I'm sending this word out to every true Christian. It is time that you examined the foundation of your faith. And if you find that it is crooked because you have personal views concerning this or concerning that, it is time that you got the biggest spiritual spear that you can find and that you put those views to death. Jesus said that if your hand causes you to sin, you should cut it off. He didn't mean that people should actually go around cutting their hands. He's trying to give an image of how brutal we should be with false beliefs that will creep in and choke the seed of the word of God in our hearts. So if you have ears to hear this message, then I'm sure you will be blessed for, by it. But if not, may you prosper in the way that you are walking in. But just remember, as high and lifted up as you think you are, those steps are taking you down to what the Bible calls outer darkness. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice, and this is what I might call a prequel to the actual prophecies that are on the Master's Voice that are entitled In the Midst of Deceit, Part 1 and 2. You're welcome to go and read them. I will put the links for them in the description below. You can look in the description box below to find everything about this work that I'm doing for our Father. And until I see you again, stay blessed out there. Walk in the light and stay away from darkness because the time is coming where deep darkness will cover the earth and there will be extreme darkness in the hearts of the people, Isaiah chapter 60. But upon you, Church of Jesus Christ, a bright light will shine. Take care and goodbye.